This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. How you feeling, Big Dog? You feeling good? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I can't complain. All right. So uh, reaction yesterday morning. He's got to get the Spose logo in there. You got to love that. All right. <laughs> Been real today. <laughs> All right. So news breaks yesterday morning. Your thoughts? A uh, little bit surprised. Not shocked because. Uh, you're on with me every week. I'm sorry. I said you're not shocked because you're on with me every week. That's right, funny. I, I know you're crushed, by the way. Are you doing okay? Are you, have you recovered from the news? I know you're really upset. Oh, okay. I toast. I toast. Okay. I so, toast. Obviously. It was, it was an orgasmic show yesterday. Oh, I can, I can imagine. Dude, um, I, I still maintain the guy's a good coach. I don't, I'm not sure he's quite like – the, not ready. Not ready. Future, no, 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 no. That's not what I said. No, I, I think he was absolutely ready. The problem is, is he's got a very difficult personality. Um, he's abrasive. That's not going to change. That affects his ability to assemble a staff. And since on defense, let's not kid ourselves. It's pretty much his defense. So, and the dude can coach some defense on yes. offense. He needs guys. And it was turnover. A whole lot of different guys coming in, and he's not able to get like proven established guys because he's not easy to work with. Um, having said that, I mean, dude, you get, you got to give the man some credit again for getting his guys to buy in uh, no matter how they felt about him and never, ever giving up at when they were one and seven, that it, uh, that's impressive. And even though the, the streak was accomplished against really poor competition, that's impressive. I know you, you have, you have a very hard time giving the man any credit. No, so, it's just, it's just, I've seen this before under Adam Gase. They weren't playing for Gase. You know, Alan, I think at times we insult these players because you've had a crappy uh, boss. I've had a crappy boss. That doesn't stop you and me from doing our jobs at the highest level that we know. You know what I mean? So I, I just think players played hard for themselves, for their incentives, for the, for each other. This this complete BS that he kept the team together. This guy's not liked enough. And I've watched this story before, as I've mentioned, whether it's, you know, Tony Sperano, uh, whether it's Saban, whether it's Gase. All these teams all came back with the same kind of streaks that this guy did. And it wasn't because they were playing hard and they love Saban or they love Gase or they love Sperano. Although actually Sperano was liked, actually. I will I will say Sperano was liked. Uh, let me let me not let me not and he was a hard ass too. Yeah, yeah, and he was hard. No, but he but he was a hard ass that knew how to love too. You know what I'm saying? It was fair. It was it, it, Tony actually no, Tony's a real you know, rest in peace. He was a really good man. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not gonna say that they didn't like him, but in the end it didn't really mean that the coach was the difference and why they were streaky and why, you know, it, it just, it's hard for me to give. I'd rather give the players the credit that they're really professionals. I think we, we go to this extreme of tanking and we think that out of the 53 guys that 50 of them are willing to tank and really the reverse is maybe one or two or three are going to be lazy bastards, but the rest of them, they're going to go out there and play at their best because yeah. they're pros. No, no, I, I understand that. And, and then first, if, we, if we're talking about the Dolphins in 2019, it wasn't a tanking, it was a roster reset, basically. Right, basically right. Starting from scrap because right. none of the players and the coaching staff, they were playing to win. That's why they wound up winning five games with a team that should have won. They barely knew each other. Yeah, no, no. Well, no, the no, team no. should have won one or two games I mean, if we're, if we're going to go by the town on that team. But, but again, it, but if you mention, see, I, I go back to 2007. If, you, if you're going to tell me that the team – didn't check out on, on Cam Cameron in 2007. I'm going to have a hard time believing. Yeah. Oh, no, I was there. I covered that well, team. No, right. So no. they, they the didn't track, check out on Brian Flores no matter how they thing, The tractor trailer thing destroyed that 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 that, that, that uh, uh, locker room. Well, they the were thing pissed. is they didn't respect him. Yeah, but yeah but they were pissed how he treated Tractor. That was the problem because Tractor was loved in that locker and, room. And, and the players uh, also did not respect him. The players respected no. Flores, even though they might not have liked him. They respected him, even though they might have not have liked him. Yep. That's, that's right. two different things. And the yes. guy can coach defense like Amen. Crazy. that guy Amen. big time. Um, so having said all that, the, the, the origin of your question is basically, yeah, 
it was a little bit surprising because I think he is a good coach. Not shocking in the sense that, yeah, there were there were issues there, and and I go back to the inability to build a better offensive coaching staff. No offense to any of those gentlemen, um, but that's highly problematic. And and if you look at those guys, how are we expecting the the uh, offense to get that much better? And I know we harp on the offensive line, but how much of the how much of the problems? How, oh, the, problem of the offensive line is coaching and how much is talent. Um, all of all of it is coaching in my eyes. I think it's all coaching. I'd say I think we would, we would, more coaching. I, I think we would find out that two or three of those guys are actually decent and then two or two or two or three of those guys aren't good and they can be backups or something for you. But um it's it's just a it's a it's a it's a terrible situation. I just I just don't think the coaching overall elevated the offense at all. I, I just Agreed. Doesn't matter what part of it, QB coach, O line coach, offensive coordinators. I just don't think they were good enough at the NFL level, and and to assist uh, this guy. So, what I will say, what I will say though, is that, that the play calling to me toward the end of the season was good in terms of dealing with all the limitations that they had. Some of them brought on brought on by the fact that they weren't instructing those players well enough. Right. Uh, the owner spoke yesterday. Um. And and he talked about looking at it as at three years collectively what was going on. So mm-hmm. clearly there was some kind of inventory being taken about incidents that con- constantly went on. Do you know of any of them, by the way? No, I I, I saw the one. Well, it, I don't know if you were going to call that an incident, but obviously the the high thing situation absolutely um, is a situation. It was it was an incident that speaks to a coach not being able to I may remember the, the word he used com- communication and right. uh, Jeff Darlington, our buddy from ESPN suggested that the problem was relationships. That's you basically fractured a relationship and wound up throwing away a really, really good player uh, for a first round pick in a trade that you wouldn't make and you would never want to make. Uh, that's one thing. Um I've seen in a couple of different places and then an incident with Tua in the Tennessee game where they exchange words yeah. in the locker room. Um, yeah, that was in Dave Hyde's article. And then he he went on with a whole bunch of uh, Shula uh, uh, examples. And I'm sitting there going, Dave, um, Red Fox isn't allowed on stage anymore. And neither is Richard Pryor, bro. You know, it's a whole different world now. Okay. Sorry. Don, Don Rickles. You're not allowed on stage anymore. Those kind of, you know, there are certain things you aren't. And by the way, Tua got along with Sabin. So clearly there's something wrong with Florida. That's, that's a very good point. Yeah, you're damn right. It's a good that's point. And no. so that's what I would tell Dave Hyde that I, I agree with him 95% of the time. But that column right there, I, I, I couldn't, I, I didn't agree with one freaking word from that column. That, that was a soft ass column. That was the old man get off my lawn column. Oh, well, back in my day, Shula used to scream at people and all that. Those days are done, dude. You got to know how to handle people. You got to have, you know, that was, uh, by the way, speaking of Saban, that was his problem at this level. Correct. That was he, his problem. He, he, level. he kept thinking he was dealing with college students and the players were like, yo, I'm, a, I'm you know, I'm, I'm a man. You don't talk to me like that. Right. And, so yeah. when Tua says, hey, you got a problem dealing with people, I'm going to lean to Tua instead of Flores because if Tua didn't have a problem with Saban, and Saban could be a pain in the ass, but obviously the thing that we don't know about Saban, and, and, and it does exist, by the way, he's not just an a-hole all the time. He's actually good to his players. You know, if you know, if you're doing your job, he's going to show you some love along the way. Believe it or not, he'll joke with you and he'll yeah. screw around with you a little bit. There's a lighter side of Saban that we've never seen. Although even last night, dude, he was very cordial and very professional with Kirby and everything. You can tell even he's mellowed out a little bit, even from his time here. You know what I'm saying? So the Hyde thing I thought went a little too extreme, bringing in the Shula stuff when this guy played with Saban, dude. Please, come on. Well, and also we don't know the exact details of what was said. That's number one. Number two is, is I think part of the equation that's, that wasn't mentioned is – Flores is in Shula, and Flores hasn't shown he can put together a good offense. And he's not Belichick either. <laughs> Correct. And and the problem is, is again, this goes back to that that old Patriots tree. 
is all those guys, they're hard asses and they go out other places and they wear on people really fast. Mike, uh, Matt, Patricia, Bill O'Brien, Josh McDaniels, uh, and then and now Flo. And, and Joe Judge is who for some reason still is the head coach of the New York Giants. Somebody's got to explain that one. To so me. what you're saying is the best thing was that Vrabel only played for Belichick, but not necessarily was in his tree because then he would have ended up as a rotten branch also. That's what you're saying. Well, he's also a 15-year NFL player, so he, he knows he knows again. He's not that far removed from being a, a long-time oh. NFL player. And that, that dude I'm, can sorry, I'm just having fun. I'm no, just no, having that's, fun. I, I hear you. That's if he, if he, I'm just saying it's funny how that tree just has not worked out, you know. It's like uh, when you look at the uh, at, at like the Walsh tree was amazing. Uh, you've had some the Andy Reid tree, Andy Reid tree. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's just it's weird how that tree is just mm -hmm. man. There's some stankiness around that tree. All right. So before you came on, they were asking me, and I talked a little bit. Caldwell's my guy. That I that would be my number one target because that's a guy that can build a staff. That's a guy that will delegate. That's a guy that knows offenses, and he's so good with offenses overall and quarterbacks, and he's a great communicator, too, on top of all of that. I think you're going to love dealing with him on a daily basis if they hire a guy like that. So do you go in that direction? Do you like him or anybody else of that ilk? Or do we go back to the, the day balls and the other guys that have never had the opportunity – but are the up and coming assistants? Yeah, correct. And and I was thinking about that actually. And because if you go back at the last two hires, they were like the hot shot flavor of the day: Adam Gase and Brian Flores. And neither of them panned out. So for me, not that anybody's going to ask me, but number one, very selfishly, I want somebody who's nice, who's good with the media. I mean, I I, I don't want to have to be pulling teeth all the time. And they're like there are questions that we could ask. And I'm not asking him because I know I'm not going to get an answer. So it's like, um, so that aside, but I do think without, I mean, removing all the media from the equation, you want somebody who's a little bit better with the media than being so adversarial and guarding everything like it's a, it's a state secret. Um, I think they'd be a lot better off go with somebody who's already done it as opposed to the hotshot coordinator who's never been a head coach who – you don't know how they're going to be as a head coach because they've never done it. You don't have anything to go off of. Uh, I like Jim Caldwell. That's one guy um, for all the reasons you mentioned. I like Doug Peterson as another possibility. Um, good offensive mind. Good yeah. offensive mind. Experience coaching the RPO. Took a team yeah. that won a Super Bowl. Um, great with the media. That's so selfishly. Again, doesn't matter. And another one. I'll give you another one. Todd Bowles is a guy I like. The only thing I don't like about Todd oh, Bowles. Oh God, he's a cigar store mannequin, bro. He's oh my a, God. He doesn't have a he doesn't have a great personality, but he's a very. Oh, no, he, that doesn't no, no, matter. No no, 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 he has no personality. <laughs> Don't even say that he has that. Saying that he doesn't have a great personality is already a compliment to him. But the he dude has, can coach. The dude can coach. Um, here he has the personality of of this remote, right here. How about right my, here. my my iPhone? Or does my iPhone have more personality? No, your iPhone has way more personality oh, okay. than 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 that than Todd Bowles. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, but he can coach. You can't. He um, can. And defense only, is nasty. Nasty. Correct. Nasty. Um, my only concern with him is he's a defensive coach. I personally would prefer an offensive coach. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So yeah, who's, those your are three guys. Who's, who's your number one target? Like mine is Jim Caldwell. Who's Doug yours? Doug Peterson would be mine. Okay. I think Jim, Jim Caldwell would probably be two. Okay. All right. What are you working on, uh, Sports Illustrator, to start off this uh, – What's going to be an exciting off season for you guys? See, what do you think? Um, I, I did something yesterday. I mean, it's it's all all cell related to coaching start coaching search. Uh, now we we've got a couple of interviews set up by the Dolphins with Brian Dable. First of all, number number two, Mike McDaniel, the run game coordinator of the 49ers, who interviewed last year for the offensive coordinator position. So that one's a little bit weird to me. Um, and I'm sure there'll be more names trickling out. And our good friend Brian Flores interviewing with the Bears. I'm sure you heard that. And from what I hear, word out of Chicago, he's, he just might be the leading candidate. And get this for a twist. Knock yourselves out, Chicago. Get, get, no, I, I don't know what you wish for. Uh, how's this for a twist? One of the guys they're interviewing for the GM position is Jeff Ireland. Oh, well, that makes sense. Now, can, he's, but can No, he's great. But can we imagine Jeff Ireland and Brian Flores working together? No, no that won't happen. Woo! 
that won't happen. That Ooh, won't happen. That'd be a rough one. Um, yeah, that, that will not happen. No. So I also did. Uh, no. So I have, and I have a whole bunch of questions, and I'm going to present them in writing based on the Stephen Ross's press conference yesterday. Um, By the way, he said he he talked about the confidence in Tua. But he kind of left it open that the, the next head coach will decide and all that stuff. But that's all BS. In the end, they're going to hire somebody that has the same idea that the front office is. Hey, we, we believe in Tua. We're going to build around him. We have the assets, the money. Let's go get it. Do you agree? And then, yes. If you don't agree, I don't think you'll get the job. That's just me. No, no, I, I could see that. And But the thing is, Stephen Ross is very, very careful. He, he wants to put out the perception that I'm a hands-off owner. I don't tell anybody what to do. But now listen to this quote, and you tell me what you make of this. Um, I have all the confidence in the world in Tua, but the next coach. Right. Coach, not GM, not Chris. The right. next coach. I got a follow-up for you. It's going to be really sweet. Go ahead. He's going to decide the, the quarterback. So what? So what happened in 2020? Was it the coach who, who picked the quarterback? Because we, uh, we know Flores doesn't like Tua. Right. So me, me thinks, no, it wasn't. So please explain that one to me. Oh, well, I think he did. On the Watson, when he was asked, he says, I have no plans. That's up to the coach. So that tells me he had no plans on getting Watson, and neither did Chris Greer. This was all driven by Flo trying to force the issue with Watson because he was not a believer in Tua. That's what that, that when he says Watson, I have no plans. That's up to the head coach. He's telling you what just happened this past year. It was the head coach that was coming into my office saying, We got to trade for Watson. And that's where obviously part of the, the difference he had with the front office, too, because the front office is going, Dude, we, we have Tua. We, we got to build with Tua. Well, I don't believe in Tua. We got to trade for Watson. I think this is part of it. And by him saying yesterday, Watson, I have no plans. It's up to the next head coach to decide that. That tells me he left it to the head coach this year. And that's where the Watson stuff came. Okay. But from. then based on his comments then, so, so who picked two? Are, are we supposed to believe oh, that? Greer. Greer. Oh, no, I – dude, but, I can oh, But you. so Greer picked two, but the next coach is going to pick the quarterback because that's what he said. He said, I'm going to let the next – depending on, on the next Right, coach. right, right. He, he's so going to – makes, right. makes zero sense or it's a complete – it's a complete BS CYA – um, well, no, no, you're right. Because you're, what you're, I was told right. is he was hot and heavy after, after, after Watson. Right. It wasn't just, it wasn't just Flores. Stephen Ross liked Deshaun Watson. It, no, I, I actually, I, no, no. I think you're onto it in the sense of, yes, it's up to the next coach. He's leaving it open that way. But I think that decision's already done. He's just telling you that because he has to say that publicly. He can't say, hey, the next coach has to coach Tua. He can't do that. He can't paint that kind of a picture because he doesn't know what the offseason holds. Maybe there is a deal that they can't pass up and they can take advantage of. So they, so he has to leave himself open with that. But he didn't have to tell you that the next quarterback, well, no, that's up to the head coach. He didn't have to say that. So and if, if, Chris Greer is fully that, in, if, Chris, if Chris Greer is fully in charge of personnel and Chris Greer yes. drafted Tua, Yes. Then there should be no question, and they, and Stephen Ross should have said that two is our quarterback. Yeah. That's the guy we picked, and that's the yeah. guy we're moving forward with. Where, where, so while was, Greer, like, while like, Greer, tr while Greer tries to appease his coach and help him and and get things that he needs, in this case here, the personnel department wanted Tua. The owner wanted Tua. It was the coach that did not want Tua. Okay, I know what he wanted. No, no, no just can't right. say it. I know what he wanted. Correct. He wanted the, the tall guy with the gun from, from in California. I'm not, no, no, no. He did not want that guy. That's that's a that's a complete lie. Who do you, who do, that, who do you think he wanted? No, no, I don't think. I know. I just cannot say. Okay. Okay. I know who he wanted. Okay. And if I tell people, you would all jump from the highest bridge in the world. Okay. It had nothing to do with Herbert. All right. Okay. My life on the line. Nothing with Herbert. Nobody. Okay. It, he never wanted Herbert. It wasn't he Herbert. To, he, he, didn't didn't want Tua. Tua. he didn't want Herbert. He wanted somebody else. Okay. Okay. It'll come out one day. I'm well, just saying. Only... But, you know, I'm not yeah. going to be the one to say it, but okay. it's going to come out. And okay. and people, oh, wow. 
Well, I'm glad I got rid of that guy. Just saying. It's going to happen. Anyway. All right. right. Anyway, the bottom line is there was a whole lot of double talk. Um, covering up. Covering it's up. Covering I mean, up it's... Because there's a lot, there was a lot of infighting, and they didn't want to talk about it, and they didn't bring it out to the, to the forefront, and, and people didn't find out till now. Or unless they listened to this show, and then they heard that he was acting like an asshole the entire time in the building, then they, you know, those that listened to this show, they found out that uh, what was going on behind the scenes a little bit with, uh, with Flo. But anyways. Well, and, and the other thing, too, is if you can't get along with, with Chris Greer, that's... That's a problem. Yeah. yeah. That's a problem. Dude, you I mean, can't get along with Tua? Come on, bro. Well, if you're writing him because he's because he's not performing the way you want him to perform, that's a different thing. But there's a way of you can write him without being. Hey, in know, hindsight, we start, we start thinking about the Kenny Stills thing. Kenny Stills is harmless, bro. He's a good dude. He's not a bad person. Well, there's but no that, that was that, but that was about just calling out the owner publicly. I mean, that's. Okay, but fine. But then he shows him up with the Jay Z music in front of all the teammates. Well, that, well because he's also that's massively. Not a bad, that's a, that's a bad look for the coach. The coach didn't have to stoop to that point. You know what I'm saying? The, those are things that he has to cut out, bro. Yes, Shula would never do that. Jimmy Johnson would never do that. Pat Riley would never do that. You know what I'm saying? No, like no, no. real coaches, Spo would never do anything like that. You know what I mean? Because there's a little bit, there's a little bit of insecurity there. Um, and that, that was basically showing Kenny Stills, like, I'm, I'm the, the man, man, you're not. Right. Correct. Yeah. And that's bull crap. Yeah. That's just not, that wasn't, that wasn't, that wasn't good. All right. Follow him on Twitter at Poopart NFL. Catch his work at Sports Illustrated. We tell you, man, you got a bookmark it there for the uh, Sports Illustrated Miami Dolphin fans all over the world. And uh, my man, Alan, is pumping out stories left and right. Uh, we will catch you. Uh, what's the new schedule? What is it? Thursday, right? Thursday. Yeah. Thursday. We'll catch you on Thursday, my brother. Appreciate you as always, Alan. Thank you. Right back at you, bud. You got it. There you go. The Sports Grill, Miami Dolphins Insider Report.